In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the URL fetch app class using the fetch method in order to make a request to a URL. So using the typical get request and then also how we can make a post request creating data that we want to send to the endpoint, stringifying it, and then adding it as a payload, returning back the content as JSON. It's going to be returned back as text content that we parse back into a usable object format, take the response and create a spreadsheet, append a heading row, and then add that object information that's returned back from the endpoint and add it into the spreadsheet. So that's all coming up in this lesson. Log into your Google account, go to script.google.com, create a new project. The project that I'm going to be using is the example project. And we're going to be making a URL app post request to an endpoint. And the endpoint that I'm using is a testing endpoint. And this is at httpbin.org. So this gives you an opportunity to send a post, do a get with parameters, and get a response back from the endpoint. So making a connection using the fetch request, and then we're going to return back a response back from the endpoint. So going into the example, creating a function, and I'm calling it sender1. So this is going to be our sender function. Add a URL that we're going to be sending the data to, and the endpoint for the URL. So we're going to be making a first a get request. So that's at the http bin.org forward slash get, and that's going to be the endpoint for the get request. And then we'll retrieve back the response back from that endpoint when we're making the get request to the endpoint. So we'll go ahead and we'll create the response object, use the URL fetch app service, and then the fetch in order to make the fetch request. Uh, fetch all, the difference between fetch and fetch all is fetch all will send multiple requests until all of the URLs are completed. And in this case, we only just have the one URL. So we're making a fetch request to the URL, and we've already indicated the URL that we're making the request to. And then within the logger log, we're going to get the response content back. And initially, this is just going to be the response object. So select the sender1 function from the dropdown. And what we see back is that we get the headers being returned back. And we want to actually get the response content back. So from the response object, we want to get the data that's returned back. And we can do that using the response object and then get the content data as content text. And let's output the data object into the log. So once again, we get the request and we get the request info object there. So that's going to be what's being returned back as the data object. So we want to create some data that we want to send over as options and parameters into the request. So let's set some of the options within the request object where we've got options, we'll call it ops. And this is going to be within an object format. And we can set the method. And once again, within an object format. So just quote around the property name. And then let's set the value for the property. So in this case, we're going to be making a get request. And we can also do a post. So how about we change that to post. And we're going to add in some values. This is also going to be within an object structure. So we'll have our first name. And then these can be any data, any pieces of data that we want to send over to the endpoint. And depending on what the endpoint is looking for, uh, you could customize this to suit your needs. So right now, we're just going to be sending over these values as the data. And within the options for the request, set the content type. And the content type that we're going to be using is going to be a JSON. So application JSON. And we want to convert the object into a stringified format. So create the string version of the values. And this can be done using the JSON stringify method. So it's the same as what you see within JavaScript, where we can convert an object into a string representation of that object. 
and then we can also take a object-based string and return that into back into an object format. So we need to stringify it in order to send it over as the payload and then comma separate it. And this is going to be the data that's being sent over. So give it the property name of payload. And this is where we've got the string value string that we're sending over. And within the fetch request, we're going to be making a request. So we're no longer going over to get we're going to be going to the post endpoint because we are making a post request. And within the second parameter there, add in the options object. And we're still going to the same URL. And we'll see what we get responded back from the endpoint. So run through, make the request. And we see that we've got the data that we've sent. And then over here is where we've got the JSON response value that's being returned back. So if we want to make a request send over data to the endpoint, and we've got the data being returned back. So let's convert this back into an object. So once again, let's make the request. And we can see that within the response back, we can get the JSON data. And this, because the endpoint is simply returning back the data back to us, Let's see what we get for data JSON and do the request. So that returns back a null. And the reason for that is that we want to get the data and use it as an object format. So using the JSON parse, get the data and turn it into an object format. And then once it's within an object format, then we can return back the object data JSON data. And because it's within an object format, we can then output that information over into our Google script. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add that returned information and add it into a spreadsheet that we're going to be creating. So go ahead and create a sheet object using the spreadsheet app and then the create method. Give it a name and I'll just call it JSON. And so this is going to create a sheet within the root of my drive. And I want to get the JSON data object. And then using a sheet, we're going to append a row of data into it. And the row of data is going to have the object and then JSON object. And within the values, we've got the property names. So we've got first, last, and ID. So we can use those, adding them in as items within the array and selecting last, and then selecting the ID is the last one there that we're sending over. And also, let's create a row for the heading. So do an append row. And this is just going to be for the heading information. So for the first row, or first column, it's going to be first name, and then the last name, and then the ID value. So this will create two rows within the spreadsheet. And that's going to be generated directly with on the Google Drive. So go ahead and we'll make a request. So we've got the data that's returned back from the endpoint. And then going into the drive, there's our new file that was just created with the data that was retrieved back from the endpoint. So what we did is we made a request to the endpoint, sent the data, and then retrieved the data back. And that's how you can use the URL fetch app in order to make a request, a fetch request that makes a request to a URL. And you could also include various options for the parameters and return back a response and then do something with the response within your Google Apps Script code. And in this case, what we're doing is we're adding it into a spreadsheet that just got created. So go ahead and try it out and you can use the HTTP bin org or you can use your own endpoint to make the requests too.